Thank you, Mark, over here. Okay, thank you all for stopping by this uh, analysis seminar today, analysis slash number theory. It's a pleasure to have uh, Mitun Das with us this afternoon. He will speak about the variance of a general class of multiplicative functions in short interval. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Thank you, thank you, Manel, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here, and I enjoyed a lot. It's a nice quality environment. So this is my first time visit uh, outside India and did a talk. <laughs> so let's see. And yeah, so as you've seen, the title of my talk, uh, variance of a generic class of multiple functions. So this is joined up with Pranam Dorbar from NTNU Norway. So he, he is post up there. So what we are the goal is here. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, as you see, the goal is basically estimate given a large class of multiplicative functions. So a is the set of multiplicative function, large class. We define letter, and for a belongs to this class, we want to estimate uh, this quantity that uh, if it given h, which is up to h to the theta, theta less than equal to 1. And uh, this is we noted as a short average and started by relating with the long average, or you can say it is a global average. So, people the long average as well as you can start with uh, 1 to x, this is also called long average, and uh, this is easy to handle, easy to understand. But once you consider short average, this is really difficult. And uh, usually, long average, we always given a multiple function, we always Interaction with current formula. This is nice uh, device in complex analysis which connect to study the counting problems in a number theory. So we started this uh, difference uh, elsewhere. No, you can say autonome or some say it is called variance also. So our aim to obtain asymptotic formula for this uh, problem. So the main term plus error term. That is our aim. So let's motivate uh, why we study this problem. So let's start with the multiplicative function. So a multiplicative function, basically an arithmetic function, so which taking from natural number to the complex numbers, and uh, it is called multiplicative if uh, we make uh, like f of m on f times m, m times n equal to f of m times f of n when they are relatively prime. So when they are not relatively prime, there is a uh, another function. This is called completely multiplicative function. So, completely multiplicative functions, if we not restrict ML, this is the restriction, this is called completely multiplicative function. We also use this uh, definition later. So, very beautiful example in this direction uh, and very useful example in uh, for number theory, the Mobius function. And Mobius function defined by uh, the mu n equal to minus 1 power k when it is uh, the product of k distinct prime, prime factors and it is 1 at 1 and other value is 0. For example, if you are taking say mu of 2 square and 3, this is actually 0 on the definition, but if you take mu 2 is 5, this is equal to minus 1 power 3, this is equal to 1. So this way Mobius function is defined and it is really connected uh, so many things, but here we uh, see that the prime number theorem, this uh, basically counting the primes up to n is directly connected with uh, the sum or average of the Mobius function and uh, prime number theorem it says that, that uh, how many primes up to x. So this have a nice asymptotic formula that uh, x by log x, it is more or less like that. And uh, okay, let's fix the notation what it do mean by asymptotic formula. So asymptotic means we say f of x asymptotic to g of x at x tends to infinity. That means you would just limit your taking. X 
x by plus this is 1. And where it is 0, in this case we notate f of x equal to small of g of x. And we do also use another notation, this is a big O notation that uh, f of x we can write big of um, what is some positive function gx big of gx if we have the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to for some constant c some absolute positive constant c we have this relation for all x bigger than x naught so after certain x you just uh, getting this uh, less than or equal to relation for certain constant so this is a kind of growth rate. Uh, so we use the, this notation frequently. And so prime number theorem as the asymptotic formula for this founding of prime, it directly saying that if you getting this uh, summatory function is small of x, that's uh, say, say that this has this asymptotic formula. And similar, another uh, equivalency related to Riemann hypothesis. Riemann hypothesis says that uh, Riemann zeta function, the Riemann zeta function have uh, all all non trivial zeros along the critical line or half line in the complex plane. So this is equivalent to saying that this uh, average uh, or this uh, sum have this cancellation x to the um, x to, actually x to the power half cancellation, almost about x to the power half cancellation. So this nice cancellation equivalent to Riemann hypothesis, but with uh, only less can some cancellation equivalent to prime number theorem. Now, uh, the two most fundamental question in the direct sum of short interval. So, what is the shortest interval that contain a prime? So, this is uh, this is the question as a study from uh, say around the 90, beginning of 90, but uh, still you have a lot of scope to study because still problem is open. And uh, so, this uh, this counting of uh, short interval, counting prime in short interval is equivalent to showing that the asymptotic formula, this summatory function of lambda, where here lambda is the Hohmann goal function, this taking the log logarithm of p when n is prime powers, others when it is zero. So this is kind of equivalent. And the second question, what is the shortage sort of that contain a sign change of Mobius function or there is or some cancellation of the Mobius function? So these two fundamental questions still uh, remain open and uh, I mean still have a scope to research and uh, the first, regarding the first case, uh, the unconditionally it is known that one can consider the short interval of x to x plus h where h looks like uh, less than equal to x to the power alpha, alpha is 0.525. So this is due to Becker, Harman and uh, Pin in 2000, they proved that this short interval contain a primes. So this is, uh, this is kind of, uh, first breaking result after some averaging result or uh, the result by Huxley that uh, if you take H uh, bigger than X to the power one six plus epsilon, then for almost all X belongs to X to capital X to two capital X. Then if you consider A N is either lambda minus lambda N minus one or mu N, in this case, this uh, sum summary function in short interval actually is small of h, we just uh, writing explicit version, but you can consider this small of h. This equivalent to saying that, uh, that uh, sum over lambda n is asymptotically h for this short interval, for almost all h, uh, x belongs to x to capital two, uh, capital x to capital two x. Okay, or uh, Mobius function, uh, uh, this sum of summary function Mobius function is small of h, these two statement equivalently, for almost all small x belongs to capital X to capital 2X. Then uh, the conjecture by Kramer in 1936 that uh, one can expecting by using, he used actually positive model to saying that uh, this short interval can be taken like X to X plus some constant time log square X. So this is still very far on the current status of this question. And uh, regarding second question in uh, 2015, Mathamaki here as they will give a breakthrough result, not only the sign change of the Mobius function in short interval, but for 
generate class of multivariate function, the multivariate function with a bounded, uh, bounded, which bounded by one, in this case, they're relating the short average with the long average, uh, showing that the difference is very small. That's mean for almost, obviously for almost all X, not uh, uniform. And uh, this give you that uh, you can study the short interval in terms of the long, long short average in terms of long average. And uh, this give a consequence that uh, the Moe's function have a lot of, uh, have a cancellation in the short interval x2, x plus psi x. Psi x you can take arbitrarily slowly. So this psi x, no matter how slow you can uh, take, uh, but it goes to infinity. So you can take psi x goes to infinity with x, but you also can take psi x less than equal to x also. So it's kind of, uh, I just writing psi x less than equal to h less than equal to x. So it's all interval. Only except uh, fine, uh, in a finite situation. Okay. So, but uh, to prove this, as you say, this is almost all means kind of they uh, consider L2 norms actually. So they uh, consider certain variance, so which uh, looks like the uh, difference of uh, the square of the, this set, but restricted, n is restricted certain subset of integers. So this uh, subset actually, uh, x, x, uh, consider the whole set of integer up to x, except some uh, interval have, uh, which is closer to the log function and it is goes to infinity but goes slowly. So except some set where we neglect this set. So for example, I just uh, writing the picture. So it is one, it is x, here it is p, here it is q. So they restrict the set of integer where uh, except the set, the prime not belongs to this, this region. That's mean they restrict n belongs to S such that P divided n implies P not belongs to. So using this and there's just some nice identity is called Ramada identity. This is one of the modern tool People use in multivariate number three now. And using this, uh, they basically estimate the variance of this quantity restricted with S. And then they prove this method. So now we kind of we see the kind of uh, another uh, set of multivariate function. This is uh, known as k free numbers. So a k free numbers is the basically the numbers which are not divisible by any time kth power. For example, you can see that. We just uh, supported it two three. That's mean we can write two into three. This is equal to one. But if you write mu two, two squared times three, this is again zero. And uh, this is called two three by our uh, square three. If you're writing mu three here, then two square three, this is equal to one. But mu three, the two three cube, this is equal to zero. So power at most two, that is three three. Uh, but if you take in power three, this goes to zero. This is kind of I mean uh, function for this KF number. So this is the way we can want to define the KF numbers. And for this KF numbers, there is some uh, some result known uh, for limiting average or limiting density for this uh, uh, k-free number is 1 over zeta k. So here k will be bigger than equal to 2, obviously. And uh, if we are writing this, uh, it is error by uh, using Perron formula, one can get that this uh, error term actually looks like big of x to the power x, x to the power 1 over k. So that is uh, naturally by using Perron formula, but uh, there's a slight improvement due to all phase. They're just improving kind of uh, epsilon power. We can allow epsilon power that uh, x to the power of one over k minus epsilon. So this is the improvement, but one can uh, widely conjecture that uh, this actually expecting like that x to the power one over two k plus epsilon. So 
but uh, in the direction of sort interval, so, so far we are uh, talking about the global uh, average, but now in the direction of sort average, it is an asymptotic node due to Roth and uh, Gilbert Strong Roth. Uh, that for k equal to two case, if you are taking h over log x to the power uh, c by 13 plus epsilon, that goes to infinity. In the two case, in this case, we have this asymptotic formula and similar for k bigger than equal to three, if h over x to the power 1 by 2k plus epsilon, if this is goes to infinity, in this case, we have a asymptotic formula. So this is kind of restrict, restrict that you can't take very small h. So for large, it is uh, well, you know, nicely known, but uh, small it is, uh, there is a problem. And uh, so similar to global case, in the case of uh, short interval, uh, for this KFE number, one can uh, expect that uh, this uh, this has the following uh, estimate that uh, this uh, mean value is uh, this uh, sum actually looks like h over zeta k plus big of h to over 2k plus epsilon. When you allow that uh, h lies between h to the epsilon to x. So in this sort of way, this is kind of conjecture uh, one can expect. And uh, next, uh, we see the what is the known, what is known for the square free case only, the variance estimate. So we uh, taking the sum, this is we call kind of discrete variance. Initially, I saw that taking the integration. So when variable are, uh, uh, they are real numbers, but here we taking kind of discrete sum. Uh, so this is a kind of, we say called a discrete variance. And uh, this, if you take the small interval length of this uh, more square phi number that h up to b go, small of x to the power two by nine times log x power minus four by nine, and in this case, uh, have this uh, nice asymptotic formula for this discrete variance, where the constant is looks like this, kind of bit complicated, but uh, it's okay. And uh, but one can see that actually this, uh, if you write in terms of integration form for real variable, this actually not much different. So it's kind of uh, in the discrete case, at on the integer is taking kind of points like this. But if you consider continuous case. It's kind of say it fixed up to one length, then it fixed up to one length, fixed up to one length like that. <laughs> but uh, on the one length integration, it's uh, one integration is one. So it's that that's implies that uh, integration not much changed if you are writing discrete in term of continuous variable. Only the uh, end point there is some problem at, problem there. Maybe it's sometimes taking and not taking. So therefore we can uh, allow a reasonable error. That is okay. So with this, so instead of discrete, you can consider continuous version. So that's uh, considered by, in 2020, Gadotowski, Matomaki, Rezville, and Rajar, they consider this, and they kind of stretch the exponent of the solid interval from uh, the previous result, whole result, it's like two by nine minus epsilon. Then uh, they improve from, improve up to six by 11. So this is six by 11, like 0.5454. So this is the case for uh, k equal to two case. I mean, this is square phi number case. So, and underlying related hypothesis, they also get better version, kind of uh, one can stretch this uh, solid interval length up to h to the power two by three minus epsilon. And uh, so as it from there here, by using simply using JVC inequality, one can uh, say that for almost all small x belongs to x to capital two x, if some eta goes to infinity, then, uh, in this in sorry interval x to x plus h h up to x to the power six by eleven minus epsilon that uh, this uh, asymptotic formula is hold with this uh, good error term here. So the methodology they use basically here they basically writing this Moivre function in terms of this convolution structure and uh, based on that the small divisor they uh, separate the small divisor part and large divisor part they estimating the variance. Uh, for that, they use free analysis as well as uh, digital approximation theory. And uh, for the large divisor case, they use the one or another modern tool in the analytic number theories, a large value estimation of digital polynomial, as well as some theory of a uh, zero function to get this result. And now, question is uh, what what we can say when k bigger than three for a square phi case. In the instead of square phi, we just looking for the k phi case or can we consider a wide class of multivariate function and get a some better result? 
So let's see. We consider a large uh, large class of multiplicative reaction. This is the way we define it complicated. Uh, but uh, okay, if you don't need to remember this, uh, don't want, don't don't need to remember. But uh, you remember that we consider large class of multiplicative function with some restriction. So. M is the class a set of multiplicative functions, and G is a set of completely multiplicative functions. Then, for a given alpha greater than zero, we define the class M mu M sub alpha mu that uh, collection of multiplicative function, which looks like mu d times G d by d power alpha for a multiplicative function G. And when G is, H is completely multiplicative, instead in this case, it looks like G d by d power alpha. So when we use a completely multiplicative, we kind of don't need structure of Mobius functions. But when we consider only multiplicative function, in this case, we allow the structure of Mobius function. That is why we just writing mu d times this function. So then we, uh, for, uh, for any H belongs to this union of these two classes is called the satisfied property A. If we fix in the GP at prime value, since uh, we given here GP, uh, GD, so we have to define what is G, uh, G, GD. So it's defined by the prime evaluation. So it's taking uh, some constant plus minus beta for complex constant. If it is uh, P except some finitely many primes and for all for finite many primes, we fix it as a eta. So these are the complex numbers. So then we get defined a class with these restrictions that H belongs to union of these two classes we already defined and satisfy property A and have this nice convolution structure. Fn looks like dk divided n hd. So one can see that this uh, we, uh, with this definition of gd, we can take gd up to up to size d power epsilon. So our purpose to include the divisor, generalized divisor function, that is why we just uh, define this way. And uh, actually, this class convolution structure implies that it looks like a generalization of the structure one uh, convolution with H, any multiple function. So this is a class. Now you see the special cases. So that, that is, you have to remember that now one of the special example in this case, it's if you consider a KP number, this is belongs to this subclass F01K. This is a kind of subclass of the whole class. And uh, this is the most uh, KFE numbers, and if you consider a generalized divisor function, this is uh, basically nth coefficient of the this Dirichlet series, uh, zeta s times zeta s minus alpha, where it is defined, uh, and uh, sigma alpha n is defined this way, d divided n d power alpha. Then, uh, if you are taking alpha less than minus half, in this case, uh, this sigma alpha belongs to this class f alpha one. So this is again another subclass of this uh, total class, and. Uh, now it's kind of a generalization of Euler phi function. It's defined even a subclass of silver class. So this is kind of generalization. You can remember as a consider the Euler product FPS at uh, FS. It's of this this form when real is bigger than one. Then uh, and if you if you fixing the coefficient this alpha j p for all prime it is fixed and j equal to one to this uh, this d value only. For all prime, it is fixed, but uh, it's uh, j on j value, it's change. So uh, then we have a uh, Tosen function this way. Uh, this is defined by Kajorowski, and uh, that uh, P of NF, it looks like this uh, nice convolution structure, actually. So the, again, this is a class, uh, this, is a, uh, this is also kind of subclass of this uh, whole class. So the special case is Euler Tosen function P n. If you are fixing this uh, silver class as a zeta j and degree one L function at zeta s, then it looks like that uh, this P n zeta is actually P n, the classical Euler phi function. So this is belongs to F one 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 subclass. And uh, similarly, if you consider some uh, real non-principal characters, so we need a real here if you in order to get uh, integer value. But you can also allow the complex value, but there uh, we can't get a good result, therefore, you're not mentioned here. And so, this is again a kind of subclass, uh, looks like f plus minus one, one. So, now for this class, we look at the, what is the mean value. So, first of all, mean value one can derive simply by using Perron formula. It uh, looks like some constant 
C tilde depend depend upon H and K time x plus some error term. So this is the mean value and uh, uh, what is this CHK? This is the limiting L prevalence of this value. This is a certain particular series A G by D power K. So our A has a structure. So F of N looks like D K divide N H of D. And this HD by D power K, it's found the picture as a limiting average of this. So now what is our goal of study? We consider this quantity. This is similar to kind of, we can uh, rearrange this uh, OS, uh, rearrange the OS such that it basically, uh, we are looking for the variance for the difference of the solid average and log average. Just uh, rearrangement needed and allow some uh, negligible error. That two things we can do. Uh, so, this is enough to consider uh, this kind. So, mean uh, limiting a uh, limiting uh, mean value, this is C tilde times H here. So then, uh, we what we prove that in the first theorem, if we taking alpha from zero to half, so and uh, beta is an integer here. So in this case, we restrict epsilon that depend upon uh, alpha and beta. And when uh, h goes up to certain x to the power exponent, that exponent will de describe later. It's a bit difficult, so I all exponent I will define later. So up to this uh, exponent of solid interval, we get uh, kind of um, bit complicated exponent uh, asymptotic formula. But CHK is again uh, some long expression we're not writing here. It's time h to the power one minus two alpha by k times some uh, polynomial of the k beta square minus one in log h plus some error. So uh, main point is that the error has uh, some power cancellation. That is uh, not possible by using any parent formula as well as other things. So uh, as well as uh, barring cell mark, there is a technique uh, that is also difficult to apply here uh, to getting uh, power saving here. So here if in the case of depend on K, we getting this uh, delta K epsilon that it is epsilon by eight when k equal to two and k bigger than equal to three, it's like epsilon by three times k plus one. So then, but under the Lendolium hypothesis, similar to result by Gordorovsky, Matomaki, Rezevil, and uh, here we also stretch the uh, uh, exponent of the half interval uh, or short interval uh, under this uh, Lendolium hypothesis. And so as a consequence of this, you can see that, that uh, we get the mean value estimate for almost all x. It looks like uh, this form which allow that eta goes to infinity as n tends to infinity. This is again by using, uh, by using um, set inequality. So then another result, so previous result is basically zero to half and this result is half to two. So when uh, alpha belongs to uh, half to two in this case and uh, beta is an integer obviously, then uh, what we get that uh, an, another exponent of the short interval e, e hat ak. So up to this uh, short interval exponent, we get the asymptotic formula here, some constant here, c h, c small h, capital H, then k. But here interesting point is that this constant we can't separate from uh, capital H. It's depend on capital H plus some irreasonable error. And under Lenoir hypothesis, again we stretch by g till uh, g hat uh, k alpha. So now we describe what is this exponent here. So this two x, uh, this so total four exponent when alpha lies between zero to half. In this case, uh, yeah. So in this case, e k alpha and uh, under Lendolio hypothesis, it is GK alpha. This is the solid derivative exponent. And uh, when alpha lies between half to two, it is E hat K alpha. And under Lendolio hypothesis, is G hat K alpha. So the four exponent, now we will uh, look how they behave. So to getting this uh, exponent, we need some uh, complicated exp expression. This is we defined by new K alpha. So this is kind of a optimal solution of some uh, three cards actually. So that is why it very looks like complicated, but uh, it's okay. You don't need to remember that. We look uh, by plotting these things in a simpler way. And uh, when alpha belongs to zero to half, in this case, we talking about the exponent. 
So when k equal to 2, it exponents looks like uh, three, 2 times 3a plus 8 to the power this. This is exactly meet if you uh, with the uh, exponent of Matamaki uh, Raja Grodkowski and uh, for the k equal to 2 case and alpha equal to 0 case. But otherwise, it's uh, for k equal to 3, uh, k equal to 3, equal to 3 case, we have uh, this expression and uh, this is depend on mu here. Similar for a G, but a GK is under a Lenovo hypothesis, alpha lies between 0 to half. So here, this GK, the exponent of the solid interval, is not depend on uh, this uh, alpha here. So it is independent of alpha, but it's at this form. And uh, similar for a, uh, E tilde K, so when alpha lies between half to 1, this, uh, this at this form, and uh, when alpha lies between half to 1, under Lenovo hypothesis, we have G, K, G hat. The alpha and when alpha belongs to one to two, we have this. So this is kind of exponent I just uh, mentioning. But uh, uh, what is that? Uh, if we draw uh, plot them, so first to plot for uh, this new function. So this new function appear in the exponent, but you even forget forget this uh, first two uh, picture. You can look at the third one. Third one, see that e k zero is the below the uh, green colors. And uh, this is uh, difficult to difficult uh, to see, but I don't know. Which, uh, it's not visible. The lower one is uh, at uh, alpha equal to zero, and the uh, upper one, the top one, is uh, for alpha equal to 0 0.4, 0 0.45, and k value. So you see that uh, when <coughs> after certain uh, after few points, it looks like a straight line. So it's this straight line is actually 0.77. So this is kind of uh, bound we can get when k is a bit, bit large, we can get uh, at most 0 0.77 so of the exponent of the short interval. And uh, similarly for uh, uh, in the case of e hat, when alpha lies between a half to half to one, in this case, like uh, e hat, e hat k, k point, uh, five one. this is the bulan of the first, uh, second, uh, second row, first graph. And uh, then uh, uh, stretching of alpha, we also get the uh, different curve. It's just getting a better bounds. So depend on alpha, if you are increasing alpha, it will get the better exponent of the short interval. So that is the purpose to including alpha here also, that uh, we, one can taking alpha equal to zero, this is also possible to consider a large class, but if you are including alpha, it also trace the short interval length. So it's uh, conditionally we can get a bit uh, better, but it is not difficult to compare here uh, with these graphs. But you can uh, check that uh, in the second uh, second row, second graph that GK. Here it is just uh, around 0.77 after certain steps. So under uh, under Lenovo hypothesis, this is the graph. This is again 0.77 after certain step, but this is always larger than the unconditional one. So now we see the application. So, so far we give the, some uh, theorem. This is obviously class of functions. We are not as you look at in special cases, how it's going on. So if I consider a Mobius function, Pn, uh, sorry, all equation function, and we are taking Pn by n. In this case, we have the variance estimate of this form if you uh, throw the whole interval up to 2 to x to the power 1 minus epsilon. This is the main uh, interesting point here that we can uh, consider uh, throughout the interval any h it is true and we have this some constant c zeta h this is depend upon h plus some error terms and the, the constant is a bit complicated but the point is that it's depend upon the fractional part of this h by d and h by d square so it's depend upon h square but it was overbet who predict that actually this constant as uniformly convergence to this point that uh, 2 by 6 zeta 2 minus 2 by 6 zeta 2 square. This is looks like 0 0.03, but it is a, from the setting of fun functional field, this happened actually, this type of constant. From there, he actually, he actually used a kind of a two um, hypotheses on that and get this, uh, predict this constant. But uh, you see, from our, from, our, from our result, we get when 2 to uh, h up to 2 to h to the power 1, 1 minus epsilon in this range, it is almost uh, there. So they, they, they allow actually up to 1, but we're taking up to 
h to the 1 minus epsilon. So in this range, uh, our constant actually depend on uh, capital H. This is the uh, uh, main difference here. So this seems uh, to be inaccuracy of their conjecture. And uh, if we see that the uh, upper bound, uh, so when h as a real number, very as a real number, this constant up to 0.833. This is the upper bound. And if you're taking h as a sequence of uh, prime number, if we have very h for the sequence of prime number, in this case, we get that this subsequence, this constant actually bigger than 0 0.13, uh, 1036. So this is uh, quite far from the points, uh, from the number uniform constant 0 0.03. So here we plot uh, the uh, fluctuation of this constant. So if you, this so first one is kind of a real age as a real variable and uh, vary from uh, uh, 10,000 to 15,000, but this is okay. If you take the second graph, uh, this is kind of in the 10 length uh, interval after 10,000, we just draw it uh, satisfy this type of behavior. But if I consider age as a integer sequence, here we find kind of four layer, uh, four layer plotting here. So this is, we just uh, numerically check that actually, First plotting, if you age looks like uh, the model uh, six, six converges to six, uh, first plotting, it is converges to zero modulo six. And uh, second plotting converges to two and four modulo six. And uh, third plotting converges to three modulo six and the last one uh, converges to three and five modulo six. So uh, I don't know why this uh, behavior happened, but uh, this is numerically we check it's happening like that. And uh, another uh, corollary or another application in the case of KFC numbers. So here, if you're taking epsilon belongs to 0 to 3 by 10. So in the case of uh, square fee number, it was like uh, 0 to 1 over 100. We just uh, replace the, the result and uh, generalize the result uh, that uh, with this epsilon and uh, 2 less than h less than some exponent of the x, ek0. We have this asymptotic formula for the scale fee, variance for the scale fee numbers. And it's have only obviously it's have a power cancellation epsilon by three times k plus one. And this constant here a bit uh, complicated, but it's okay. You just remember some constant you can upon uh, this uh, k. And under under level of hypothesis, we stretch the exponent, as I said. And then if you see that uh, for this exponent of the third interval for the case k equal to 2, that means square 3 case, it was uh, given by Gordoski, Motomaki, Rezibil, and uh, Rogers that uh, this exponent is 0.5454. But uh, k equal to 3, the exponent is 0 0.60, and k equal to 4, it's increasing. But uh, if you take k equal to 10 to the power 5, in this case, it's kind of 0 0.77346. Uh, 7, so this is kind of uh, five digit uh, uh, approximation of the numbers. Uh, when k is uh, this, one, this quantity. And uh, so this is kind of very at the point uh, seven, seven, uh, four or five. It's uh, when we can't uh, get more in the case of k free. And uh, it is already considered by recently the Gordoski, Mangrel, and uh, Rajar in 2023 that uh, they consider discrete variance and they get the exponent kind of, in the case of three, it's uh, 0.3. In the case of uh, four, it's 0.34. And 10 to the five, it's 0.5. So in the case k equal to 2, this is a result by I just recalling here. And you see, we get the exponent. So their case, epsilon goes to 0 to 1 over 100. And, but here we get epsilon goes to 0 to 1 third. This is, uh, we extend the epsilon range. As well as in the case of their error, it is just epsilon half minus epsilon by 16, we replace by epsilon by 9. So the third application is uh, the generalized divisor function case. It is Chawla in 1932 who proved that if, uh, if you take alpha belongs to minus one to half, minus half. So in this case, he estimate uh, the global uh, mean value, uh, global uh, difference, uh, global mean value estimate that this is some asymptotical, some constant times some error term. But uh, in 1998, QC and uh, Taniga actually uh, considered the short, uh, short, uh, short average. And they saw that this uh, variance difference uh, in the short interference in short interval is really less less x to the power epsilon. So, where h is up to x to the power half, they are able to show this. 
but what we get here that uh, we have a asymptotic formula with certain range of h up to x to the power 2 9, 2 9 by 1 1 3 minus 84 plus 84 alpha so in this range uh, when you taking alpha belongs to minus half to minus 1 to minus up and when if you taking minus 2 to minus 1 in this range you can allow whole interval we have this asymptotic formula with some constant ch which uh, defined this way and uh, underlying level of hypothesis again we stretch the short interval length and uh, we see that uh, this is again we get a asymptotic formula and as well as the interesting point is the second point that uh, we actually extend the range of the interval in, uh, when alpha lies between minus uh, minus up to minus 0.6 is instead of uh, uh, x to the power half we get better better range for example alpha equal to 0.3 by minus 3 by 4 it's 0.58 and similarly around uh, near 1 it's uh, near minus 1 it's 0.97 this looks like that so one also can apply several other interesting uh, multiplicative functions but we just uh, mention here samuel Tosan function this basically n consecutive uh, number less than n and relatively prime to n this is this kind of another kind of multiplicative function and Second one is count of minus one power number of times such that it will be by n. It's these two have a nice multiplicative structure. So just mention here. And now we see the sketch of the proof. So how much time is given? Am I fast or slow? So as I said, uh, we use kind of Fourier analysis. So therefore, we uh, separate two cases when h is quite a bit small, that uh, b is large, that unit is bigger than x to the power epsilon. So in this case, uh, what we do that uh, we basically separate uh, according to the divisor of this uh, multiple function. So when divide small small divisor, so given a parameter, if divisors for k up to z, we are taking one term and other term when divisors bigger than z. So this is a standard used by Hall as well as Godorowski, Motomaki, Reziville, this construction that they break this and this way they study. And then by position inequality, it is, uh, if you consider this short average minus dk less than uh, equal to 2x, h times dk less than equal to 2x, hd by d power k. So this difference by using position inequality, one can write this, uh, expression ik1 plus big of ik2 times uh, ik2 plus square root ik1 ik2 and ik1 you can uh, remember that ik1 is a uh, variance for short uh, small divisor the as dk less than z and ik2 is uh, variance for large divisor so we separate the uh, one can separate this way then uh, here we uh, do kind of measure uh, <coughs> on given a characteristic function of our one to two one can get nice smooth functions as you wish and which have a nice uh, which have a bounded so which Fourier transform has nice support for bounded support as you wish that's when here we consider here our useful is minus uh, h to the for some constant minus h to the power epsilon to h to the power epsilon that's really required so that uh, the integral difference of the integral their integral is very small that is uh, needed and uh, this have a nice explicit construction due to silver by using uh, Barling functions, uh, we construct uh, for explicitly, and one can, uh, for the reference, you see the nice survey by Montgomery 2001, that harmonic analysis can be found in uh, number theory. So using this uh, step three, we can write the small divisor variance of, uh, in term of infinite integral, allowing some reasonable error, like uh, h to the minus epsilon two. That we have to balance later, but uh, for the time we will keep it. So then uh, we now we looking at the structure of this uh, sort uh, sort average, sort average sum. We can write it in term of the main term h h times dk less than z h d by d power k plus some function in term of this sort function. The sort function psi y is defined by y minus uh, the integer part of y minus half. Uh, this is the way uh, define this function. Now we can estimate by the Fourier series of this uh, psi function. Uh, so tail part we write it like that and uh, keeping the first uh, n terms. So n is in n is our hand. It's uh, we can uh, choosing depend on capital S later. 
So using this, or we can write this as a smooth version of the sort of small divisor variance uh, in terms of Fourier transformation of sigma. So now you see that in terms inside sigma, we can uh, consider diagonal and not di non-diagonal as usual. But if we consider it is make it zero, it is a diagonal contribution. So this uh, depend upon the solutions of this quadruple when uh, this difference equal to zero and non-diagonal solution when this is not equal to zero. When this is not equal to zero, in this case, we use the support of this uh, Fourier transformation of sigma. So then uh, the diagonal contribution we can write in that in this form where it, this, this omega square actually, it was like sine x by uh, pi x square, sine pi x by pi x square, but we replace a nice smooth function, uh, which is a nice approximation of this function. And this is possible, uh, uh, one can consider complex uh, function also. This is also a nice uh, approximation. And uh, now we define this small omega, small double x by writing capital WX squared times EX. Then we see that the Fourier transformation, it's actually, this Fourier transformation actually related with the Millin transform by this relation, that small omega, Fourier transform small omega, actually the uh, region has a kind of Millin transformation with some, uh, something is not appear here, minus one, but this is balanced with this, uh, the definition of uh, small omega. So by this relation, uh, we use this relation here because, okay, so why we do that? Because you see that inside omega square is positive number. We need uh, something capital omega square, uh, capital omega, some positive number in term of small omega, uh, Fourier transformation of the omega. That is why we just uh, change this uh, this way. And uh, okay, so one can, uh, uh, by this definition of small omega, one can just uh, partial derivative of uh, this uh, last terms uh, get this, this is nice uh, inter function. And in fact, it is uniformly part of when your this imaginary part of this chi is less than one over two pi, because so that this is uh, the modulus of the mod of y minus two pi i j is uh, bigger than uh, one power. So with this restriction, we have uh, some nice growth that we require. So with this restriction, this function have a, this uh, Fourier transformation, small omega, have a nice growth. That is, we require. So we provide capital omega as a nice growth so that this still happen that omega tilde have a enough growth that we require in our region. So then uh, by inverse uh, Fourier transformation, as well, this is again related with the inverse Millet transformation. This way, we can get omega, omega square for r greater than zero here, this, uh, this form. And uh, this valid for uh, any real part C lies between uh, minus one to one. So this is uh, basically just a relation between Fourier transformation and Mellish transformation. One can forget it. And uh, then the diagonal contribution can be shifted in term of zeta uh, zeta function form. So now you just uh, simply uh, shifting the counter, get the uh, using uh, shifting the counter and using the decay. So this decay, when you shifting the counter, you have to estimate the tail parts that need the decay of the, this Fourier transformation of W. You need to put a good uh, decay that you have to apply. And the next off diagonal case, you basically estimate uh, the, uh, we need to estimate this form. So this is kind of counting problem as you see. To attack this counting problem, we consider the following lemma, this done by Mahler and uh, Stewart and Zhao in 2019 that uh, you consider any binary form of degree three with a non-zero discriminant. And uh, then uh, this have this counting problem that the number of uh, pairs x, y belongs to, or it is actually a set of z square, set of integer solution. Such that uh, this uh, mod f of x, y less than z have this asymptotic formula. And the second result by modifying the sudden uh, is from result 2000, uh, some um, result they modify Stuart and Job and get this uh, form. This is saying that if you're taking the solution a bit large, in this case, you get the counting it a bit smaller. So we combining these two actually, uh, suitable OA by diagonalizing, uh, by uh, and, uh, writing in the dyadic forms of the R expression and uh, suitably use this to estimate this goes to error. That is it. And then uh, when uh, the large divisor case, 
we basically apply the again i mentioned that this is a, one of the modern tool uh, in algebraic number theory we use this this is also used by gorodowski motom gresville that harald uh, montgomery huxley large value theorem this rabli says that the any digital polynomial you, you can take it cannot be uh, large too often it's uh, it have to be small quite frequently that is the main message of this they also we use suitable this way with some theory of a uh, zeta function on the digital polynomial here we consider that bhs looks like d goes to asymptotically d hd by d power s so for this we apply this theorem and uh, then nice uh, some uh, result from the riemann zeta function we estimate this and when uh, a is less than x to the power epsilon the small case now you are looking at the discrete version of the variance as you said they are continuous is as well as discrete they are not much different so we just uh, study this this is easy to study for the most case by using peron formula uh, and therefore in this case when alpha lies between 0 to half we get the same asymptotic formula as we get for continuous version and here uh, here exponent obviously we expecting very small not uh, not large and uh, similar for when alpha lies between half to 2 so in this case again we get uh, same asymptotic formula but here exponent is small and it's uh, getting this way that uh, when 0 to half it's uh, looks like first one and when uh, half to two it's second one so this is uh, obviously very smaller than uh, the continuous version so if you combining this two means uh, the when epsilon is small you just uh, discrete variance when epsilon then you replace by the uh, continuous version by shifting allowing some error and then uh, the continuous version for a large uh, edge combining these two actually we can uh, get the estimate very small so yeah so this is all and uh, this is the reference uh, here in archive and uh, thanks for your attention thanks mitum Any questions or comments from the audience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you go back to the beginning where you showed the package of the browser? Oh, with that, yeah. Uh, can you uh, state the theorem? I I didn't get the. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, why is this zero point five? Zero point five. Okay. So the uh, this or so that. Lumly, uh, they basically computationally way they find that if you take some constant and this this uh, with a small x x they have also mentioned the range this range also have uh, primes that type of result kind of computational but this is this type of result kind of uni uniform that you any uh, suddenly large x this happen uh, this is kind of different from their result but yeah so therefore this so this case uh, when you consider special case. This exponent uh, one can expect small, but uh, for any assembly logic, we get up to this. So, uh, yeah, example, when you consider consider global average, yeah, yeah, for example, global average of n complex functions, you said that's uh, equivalent to saying that there is a prime number system. Yes, 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 yes. 
So when you, the problem you are considering that the difference between the short edge, a short average and a global average, mm -hmm. is there any interpolation at least for uh, if you consider the uh, distance and the difference between these? If uh, equivalent to saying, uh, yeah, equivalent to saying or something. Yeah. So uh, see, we already have kind of uh, long average result. Mm -hmm. Then if you once you compare with the short average, that we can uh, relate with the long average. That means we get the actually short average result, right? Okay. So uh, this is kind of uh, I just mentioned that uh, two result like here. Yeah. So this is a short interval result. So this is mentioned that for almost all age that uh, the this Mobius function is in short interval. If you take a n by Mobius function, this is small of h. And this is again equivalent to uh, the equivalent to prime number theorem. Okay. That's when you can conclude this short interval also. Okay. And uh, yeah, so similar instead of n lambda n uh, minus one, if you put here, this is again this sum over lambda n asymptotic asymptotically h. This happen. That's when uh, that uh, prime number theorem is happening. This is kind of equivalent. Function, the Mavis function. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned something about what's the size of the largest interval where you can guarantee, well, the size of the shortest interval where yeah. you can guarantee there is a sign change. Yes, yes. So, what's the, the best estimate of this thing? Conditional. If you assume the Riemann hypothesis, what oh. can you say about this thing? Yeah. If I if I if I give a point x, mm -hmm. so yeah, there is a... x to x plus, yeah. So uh, something. What's the smallest something that you can put there that you can guarantee there will be a sign change for the Mavis function? Let's say when x is large. It's the same question. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. So what you have there for the prime. This Mavis function actually, I mean, okay. This uh, uniform. Uh, you asking for uniform, right? For any sort of interval. So, uh, like, not kind of mathematical level. So, yeah, so I, 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 I understood completely. That okay. So, you mentioned so, something for almost all x. Yes, 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 yes. But then in each sense. Oh, okay, okay. So, almost all means that the uh, measure of the set except the measure of the set n belongs to x to 2s. So, this level measure is small of x. The measure of the sets of the points where the yeah it doesn't work yeah right? yeah not work yeah. Uh, specifically by the big one yeah this is small o is yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, I mean this is the sense uh, in the multiple theory I mean every time we use this almost all this is the sense of needed so the positive density and uh, zero density kind of things. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, as you said, this uh, Riemann hypothesis, I don't remember exactly uh, that uh, some component exponent is there, you know, means uh, all, means uh, not even uh, you have to allow this also. Uh, but it is obviously uh, x to the power, bigger than x to the power half, some uh, form is there. Bigger than x to the power, must be. Because you know that uh, Riemann hypothesis is this equivalent to this prime number theorem, that is x to the power half plus uh, epsilon. And uh, Maybe this uh, epsilon can be improved. That is, uh, yeah, in the prime number case, this is a result by uh, Selval that this epsilon can be written as a log x square mm -hmm. under prime uh, this. And uh, I think uh, same bound probably work uh, there. I'm not uh, sure, but uh, in the almost all case, you get the better because uh, you can allow that any almost all x, almost all interval x to psi x. For almost all x belongs to x to two x, or you can allow one to x. This have a sign for any psi goes to infinity. This is the result by mathematical theory. And uh, but uh, for following that, this is almost all we need to use. So this is a base result in the sense that you can uh, any exponent. You want. But if I wanted something that holds for all x, yeah, but uh, then uh, we can't say like that. What's the function that you can put there? Yeah, so there, that is what I'm saying that it's x to the power half plus uh, plus some function, but that is expecting a log. Oh, okay, square. but this yeah. is true, right? Yeah, this so is, yeah. for every interval of the form little x, yeah, little x plus 
square yeah. root x. Yeah. So so under yeah under every one input. And universally, you know that uh, this is uh, can be uh, 0 0.52 slightly this is same actually. It's uh, time contained. And another thing that got my attention was this sort of averages, right? I mean, uh, everything we do about averages, yeah. I crossed with a similar problem a few months ago. I mean, mm -hmm. people always think the easiest way to do averages is just by, by relating to the characteristic function of the interval, right? So you sum yeah. some things over an interval and you divide by the number of things that you sum. That's an average. Yes, yes. So that's one average, right? You have, so infinitely many types of doing average if you just multiply your function by a weight and you divide by yeah, the total yeah, yeah. weight of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at some point in your proof, you said, okay, I'm going to change the characteristic function of the interval by a majorant, which and is quite limited yeah, yeah, yeah. because I want to use Fourier analysis. Yes, yeah. Well, what happens if you kind of started doing your average? Let's say <laughs> if I want an average not by the characteristic function of the interval, but with a triangle, let's say. Uh, you take a sum with a triangle uh, and uh, you subtract from the average value, uh, you could kind of consider the same problem with the triangle instead of the characteristic function of an interval, right? Or with yeah, an Gaussian. Yes, yes, I mean, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, uh, do people care about this then? Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't think. Uh, because, I mean, it's, Yeah, so when is that, uh, one point is that people use arithmetic a lot instead of lessons. So I don't know if you consider this way the function, how, how much arithmetic people would apply. Yeah. Sometimes from the front of view of analysis, these things look well, yeah, yeah, more yeah. complicated, but they're actually simpler, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because if you already put the triangle or a Gaussian, you know, it's, it's already good it. to do Fourier analysis. You don't have to take any major and ah, it's just you go there and it's already there. You know what the Fourier yeah. transform of the thing is. Yeah, so here kind of, as you've seen that the uh, counting problem is uh, being a crucial role here. Yeah. Without uh, this counting problem, can't uh, kind of uh, go to that. Uh, so if you consider other function, maybe this counting problem not come. Nicely. All right. Okay. If there are no more comments or questions, yeah. let's thank Mishim again yeah. for the nice talk. I think our next schedule seminar is uh, with uh, Diego. Yes. One day from now. Okay. Next Tuesday at, uh, at two. And then we're going to submit you some more circulate the emails. Okay. So, oh, hey. You can stop recording. Let's see, recording is a way to stop recording. <laughs>